Hello again. So I want to talk about another thing which it, um, orthonormal bases are really good for, which is computing orthogonal projection. So before, we had the notion of orthogonal projection onto a line. We had a vector v. You can see here's the vector v in my picture. And the vector v spanned a line. Here's that line. And we had orthogonal projection onto that line where we took an arbitrary vector x and we decomposed it into a part parallel to v and a part perpendicular to v. And then we had to, and so x parallel was called the orthogonal projection of x onto v. And we gave a formula for it, which was v dot x over v dot v times the vector v. And for today, we should notice that that's going to get simpler if the vector v has length 1. In that case, it will be just v dot x times the vector v. But we didn't talk about orthogonally projecting onto anything other than a line much. Um, and now we are in a good position to do that. So now, suppose instead of a line, we have a general subspace L, and we're going to show you how to decompose any vector x as a vector parallel to, at, to L plus a vector perpendicular to L. And today, I'm going to talk about how to compute x parallel and x perpendicular, assuming that you have an orthonormal basis for L. And in the next lecture, we're going to talk about how you might find such an orthonormal basis. I'll also say there's a second formula, which I'm not going to do this week, it'll show up sometime next week, about how you can do this computation even without an orthonormal basis in the first place. Oops. Uh, sorry, that used to say orthogonal over there, I should say orthonormal, now it's fixed. Okay. So let v1, v2, blah, 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 vk be an orthonormal basis for L. And my job, my goal, is I want to orthogonally project the vector x onto the subspace L. So, so I want to find a formula for this x parallel. You know, x parallel is the orthogonal projection of x onto the subspace L. So since v1 through vk is a basis, I know that x parallel is some linear combination of those vectors. It's c1 v1 plus blah, 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 plus ck vk for some scalars, and I want to know what those scalars are. Well, we place x with x parallel plus x perpendicular, and then using a distributive law, this is vj dot x parallel plus vj dot x perpendicular, but vj is in L, and x perpendicular is perpendicular to L, so the second dot product is zero. So the upshot of this big long equation here is that vj dot x is the same as vj dot x parallel. Okay, pause, absorb that. I'm gonna move on, but you can pause for longer if you like. Like, when we take the orthogonal projection, vj dot x parallel will be the same as vj dot x. But we can compute vj dot x parallel will be vj dot c1 v1 plus blah blah, blah ck vk. And then this is a trick that came up in the last lecture. When I distribute this out, we're going to get vj dot v1. That'll be 0 unless j equals 1. We'll get vj dot v2. That will be 0 unless j equals 2. The only non-zero term here will be vj dot vj, which will be 1. And so this dot product is cj. And so putting it all together, we deduce that cj is given by x dot vj. And if we plug that into the formula for x parallel up here, we see our final result. The orthogonal projection of x onto the subspace L is given by v1 dot x times v1 plus blah, 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 plus vk dot x times vk. And here's that formula again at the top of the slide. So back in the case we were just projecting onto a line, 
our basis had just one vector in it. There was only v1, and we had v dot x times v. Now we have many vectors, and this is the generalization. And of course, if you want x perpendicular, you just subtract off x parallel like this. Okay. I'm going to rewrite this all now using matrices. So let Q be the rectangular matrix with columns V1 through VK. So Q transpose dot Q is the identity matrix. Then it turns out that the complicated expression at the top of the slide, I can rewrite very compactly as X parallel is Q Q transpose X. And let's see why. Q Q transpose X, well, let's multiply the second and third terms first. When I multiply the matrix whose rows are V by the vector X, I'm going to get a new vector whose entries are V1 dot X, V2 dot X, et cetera. And when I then multiply that by the matrix whose columns are V, I'm going to get a linear combination of the columns, which will be this. And so oh, Q, Q transpose X is just a compact way of writing this formula up here for x parallel. So what we've learned from this is if Q is a matrix, n rows high, k columns wide, with Q, Q transpose equal to the identity, then the columns of k are an orthonormal basis for some k-dimensional subspace of L, and Q, Q transpose is the orthogonal projection onto L. Now, I've been talking about orthonormal bases for a while, and I haven't told you how to actually find any of them. That's because the way that you actually compute orthonormal bases is a somewhat lengthy and difficult method called the Gram-Schmidt procedure. And we'll meet that in the next lecture.